Hey, hey, everyone. We are glad to have you with us today. And uh, if you are watching this webinar on demand, you are also very, very welcome. So guys uh, who are with us right now, please share um, if you can hear and see all of us well, uh, and uh, you can use our chat for that. Please submit responses and uh, please choose the option to send uh, it out to all. Uh, meanwhile, uh, welcome again to today's App Growth Point by Splitmetrics. Um, I hope you are excited as I am because today we have a really, really interesting and I would say actual topic, uh, unlocking the full potential of Apple search ads with custom product pages. And uh, before we start, uh, I'd like to know where you guys from. Uh, to be more specific, where you're watching us from. So uh, please uh, don't be shy, please share on the chat. Very interesting to see because uh, our webinars are usually global, but I like to see all the geographies. Oh, I already see Berlin, Prague, Frankfurt. Awesome. Two Germany cities almost in a row. Ukraine. Wow, South Zimbabwe. Interesting. Welcome, guys. Thank you for sharing. Don't be so modest. Don't keep it to you. Or oh, Denmark, hey, interesting. Already we have a variety of countries, Serbia, Minsk, Belarus. Awesome, awesome. Please keep sharing because it's really very interesting. Um, and uh, again, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, yeah, looks like uh, we have an uh, international party, <laughs> international webinar today, just like Eurovision. And uh, let me once again welcome everyone. Um, we are very happy to have you here at the Splitmetrics App Growth Point. Uh, as you might already know, Splitmetrics is a global company that offers an ecosystem of enterprise great uh, products and services, uh, helping mobile businesses build and enhance, enhance their growth engine. Uh, so I suggest we slowly, slowly start uh, i'll share why we have suggest uh, why we have taken this topic uh, basically you know that um, this year 2023 is um, the year when uh, app marketers basically are forced to rethink uh, their strategies and uh, decide on the best channels to invest in uh, what to use what's the most cost effective and uh, efficient of course um, and, um, you know, uh, now uh, a bit of uncertain situation globally, uh, post-pandemic digital cooldown, uh, data privacy regulations, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and um, the, the user journey is not becoming easier to navigate right now, yeah. Um, according uh, to singular report, uh, ROI index, uh, to be more specific, Apple suggests is the second biggest ad channel by spend uh, on iOS. And uh, for me, it's most certainly the most famous channel. Uh, that's why today we have uh, invited seasoned experts to answer the questions in this regard. What are the latest Apple such as trends? Why it is important to create custom designs that resonate with your target uh, audience? And uh, of course, what factors should be taken into account when creating this uh, new call uh, and leveraging this new call feature, custom product pages? And of course, we'll share interesting um, uh, success stories with you today, uh, including hands-on experience, numbers, figures, and so on. So um, I'd, I'd like to introduce uh, our speakers and myself very quickly. Uh, so my name is Lina Danilchik. Uh, I'm marketing and communication team lead at Splitmetrics. Uh, again, happy to see you today. And let me introduce our experts and panelists. Um, Magdalena Zawarska is uh, our product, um, sorry, our, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's our client and I'm happy, I'm so proud that I'm, <laughs> I'm stating that, uh, is a product marketing manager at Tonestro um, with a 15 year track record in digital marketing. Magdalena has spent the last six years specializing in growth within the mobile apps and games, um, which is very precious. 
And Magdalena's expertise uh, in user acquisition, uh, app store optimization, and uh, project management enables her to provide versatile mobile marketing solutions. Magdalena, welcome, and thank you so much for joining me today. Um, thank you, Lina, uh, for the warm introduction. Yes, I am seasoned, uh, and that 15 years is true. Um, and hello, everyone. Um, I, it's lovely to be here today, and I would like to thank all of you that you are actually taking the time uh, and spending uh, this uh, webinar with us. So, And I hope I will uh, truly share something that will be beneficial uh, for you. And so I can't wait towards my part. A small spoiler, Magdalena, for sure, will share something very beneficial because uh, it's her, her own cool experience. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Thank you, Magdalena. And um, our second, the last but not least speaker is Anastasia Varonina, uh, our very own at Splitmetrics. Uh, Anastasia is a user acquisition manager and she has a proven track record of helping app developers and publishers scale their business through multiple multiple uh, pet, pet marketing channels, uh, including Apple search ads, which is uh, the topic for us today, and also Google, Meta, TikTok, uh, and others. Anastasia uh, basically specializes in planning and executing multi-channel user acquisition campaigns with more than uh, 200,000 uh, monthly budget for mid and uh, large size enterprise. So, guys, welcome, uh, and uh, please, please, guys, be more active on chat. Well, oh, thank you. Already, I, I, I see some welcoming words. Uh, just before we start, sorry, I don't want to keep it long, but just uh, to before we start, I wanted to clarify that we are recording this session. So, uh, if you want uh, want to rewatch it later, like uh, to gain uh, um, insights to rehearse something, no problem with that, uh, because we will share the recording with everyone uh, who registered for this webinar. And um, uh, of course, um, you can ask uh, questions. Uh, we will have. Uh, I think if we have a time, we'll have a Q&A session uh, uh, at the end of the webinar, but um, don't be shy, share your, uh, share your questions on the go, use uh, the chat section um, for this purpose. You're very, very welcome. So uh, let's start and uh, you know, uh, interesting approach I would take before sharing the information, I would like you guys to answer um, our poll is dedicated to main challenges uh, you encountered uh, while growing an app on the App Store. Uh, of course, if you are if you are uh, if you have or you are marketing an app on the App Store, so please vote. Yeah, I think it's uh, the answers. Uh, the percentage of answers will be interesting to everyone. So the first one: creating personalized user journeys audit segmentation, high CPA, or oh, it's, it's a headache, I know, for almost everyone. Uh, shift to scan um, 4.0, uh, creating high converting creatives, increasing traffic from branded keywords, increasing, increasing conversions from non-branded keywords, or other, please write your answer in the chat. Please vote. Uh, we'll see, of course, we'll see the results uh, later. As, uh, as our audience takes part in the poll, let's start, let's finally, uh, thank you for being so patient. Let's start our webinar and I'm passing the floor to our amazing speakers, Anastasia and Magdalena. The floor is yours, ladies. So, hi everybody. Uh, as Lina mentioned, there are numerous challenges that app marketers are now facing, and they focus their efforts on top performing ad channels. And according to Singular RI Index 2023, Apple Search Ads is the biggest, uh, is the second biggest ad partner by spend on iOS for Singular customers. And to provide you with even more impressive statistics, I should mention Apps Flyer ROI Index where it was stated that Apple search ads tripled its market share since first half of 2020 and took over as the number one media source on iOS. So what is displayed on this slide uh, is the official figures from Apple on performance of their search results campaigns. 
So, as you see, 650 million people uh, on average visit App Store every week. So, just imagine this number. And 70% of them use search to find their next app. Uh, almost 65% of all app downloads happen directly after a search, and search result campaigns have more than 60% conversion rate. And I think it proves that this channel is worth exploring and worth investing into. And I have even more impressive stats as we've recently launched Split Metrics uh, Apple Search Ads Benchmark Dashboard, an interactive report providing up to date insights on TTR, CVR, CPM, CPT, and CPA. So, as you can see on the slide, that our customers enjoy even higher conversion rates, 66.24% on average when running Apple Search Ads search results campaigns. Uh, but it really depends uh, on the app category and the country or region where you're running Apple Search Ads. For example, the conversion rate for a game app running Apple Search Ads in the United Kingdom is 72%, whereas in the USA uh, it is uh, 65%. So you can visit our website and check this dashboard to get a comprehensive view of all essential Apple search ads benchmarks in one place or compare your campaign performance against industry averages. So uh, moving further, I'd like to dive deeper into the challenges our clients are facing and how these challenges have transformed into the latest trends. And before I do that, let's have a look uh, at your poll answers. Uh, so event team, please share us the results of the poll. Uh, so I can see that uh, number one challenge is uh, high CPA. Uh, so um, I see uh, that our clients uh, face the same problem and they come to us so that we can help to solve it. Uh, so. Uh, for those who are uh, facing with this problem, you can drop me a line after this webinar and I'll provide you with some advice uh, so that you can implement into your strategy. Uh, also, I see that 25% are facing with creating high converting creatives. Uh, also, almost 20% uh, have problems with creating personalized user journeys and audience segmentation. So stay tuned because I will cover these questions in my presentation. Uh, so nowadays we hear a lot about the economic downturn and post-COVID digital cooldown and that changed user behavior a lot, as well as the mobile marketing landscape. Uh, whereas previously marketers focused mainly on growth, now they have to switch to profitability. So the approach, the more you spend, the more you earn, uh, doesn't work anymore. Uh, now the budget should be calculated, taking into account the limited data we have, and should be allocated in such a way so that the maximum profit can be achieved. So yes, uh, needless to say that now marketers also face challenges connected to measurement and campaign optimization. Uh, when scan 4 was introduced, it did uh, make the process easier. However, getting accurate data is still a bit challenging due to the fact that marketers now need to unlock that increased value of iOS 16.1 and scan 4. What we also hear and see uh, is that the competition is really fierce. Uh, just imagine that an average of 1,200 new apps are released on App Store each day, and 61% of the top apps overall are already using Apple Search Ads. Uh, if moving further into the trends, I cannot mention AI, uh, chat GPT, Bart AI, Notion AI, and many others are eating the world. Uh, however, uh, in my opinion, you should understand that AI is not your enemy, but a friend. Uh, now, with all the challenges, uh, better results should be achieved in a really short period of time, and that's where AI can help you. Uh, employees who are using technology, AI powered included, are much more productive. Also, as an update that was uh, discussed numerous times, is that last fall, uh, Apple launched new ad placements to date app and product page at the very top of you might also like list. 
And I'd like to pay uh, more attention to the Today tab. As well, working with customers, we found that Today tab adds boost branded traffic. According to our observations, uh, branded search traffic increases the day after the Today tab spike, which means that users remember the brand name after they see the Today tab campaign and return to the App Store to search for the app. And to run today tab campaigns, marketers need to create custom product pages. And that's where I'd like to move on another great trend, in my opinion, which we see, and that's user journey personalization. Uh, it's a key in winning new customers because 90% of them find personalized ads appealing. In Apple search ads, when we are talking about personalized experiences, we are talking, of course, about custom product pages. And what I also need to mention is that ASO and paid UA synergy is a must. For example, when running search result campaigns, users end up on the app's product page, and depending on how well it is optimized, the user will be more eager to download the app. And when designing custom product pages, ASO team can share their expertise to generate various hypotheses. And before focusing on the personalized experiences part, I'd like to ask the audience about their experience with custom product pages. So event team, please launch our next poll. Yes, so please vote and I'll tell you more about custom product pages. Uh, so while custom product pages serve a similar role to a default product page, the huge difference is that with custom product pages, you can, you can target specific audience needs. For example, you have an effective product page that successfully converts uh, users from impressions to installs. However, due to the app's numerous features, uh, separate keyword lists yield lower performance as it becomes challenging to showcase all the features within a few images. Uh, furthermore, the image that best represents the feature for a particular keyword may be uh, placed last and simply be overseen by the target user. So custom product pages solve this problem as they allow to display the appropriate uh, image for each set of keywords. Um, custom product pages are also the key uh, to unlocking higher user engagement and conversion rates, as users are more likely to respond to highly relevant ads tailored to their needs and preferences. And to create those ads, you need to tap into user data like demographics and uh, preferences. Uh, this tailored approach allows UA team professionals to highlight specific app features and test value propositions, optimize ads for specific markets and order segments, maximize seasonal opportunities like Christmas offers or some sporting events, run one-time promotions, and even re-engage with customers, for example, by highlighting certain new features uh, for returning users. As a result, a user feel a stronger connection to your app, leading to increased conversions. And we're also going to share with you the amazing results you can achieve when successfully implementing search results at variations using custom product pages. Moving further, there are different ways to create, set up, and also test custom product pages for today tab campaigns as well as for search results campaigns. Uh, and we've developed a dedicated custom product page playbook where you can find all this information and also pro tips from my colleagues. There'll be a link in the chat so you can download it and integrate into your custom product page development and management process to improve your campaign performance. And here I'd like to share with you some best practices you need to keep in mind when designing your custom product pages. So, first of all, opt for high-quality images or videos that showcase your app or product in an engaging and visually appealing way. To avoid visual noise, consider using less text. User attention span is rather short, so no one will read long sentences in a small font size. So, craft persuasive captions that are large, bright, and easy to read. Focus on action verbs that describe your app's features and benefits. Also highlight important phrases and verbs to quickly convey the main idea without users needing to explore the entire image. The next point is very connected with less text. 
the human brain processes images 60,000 times faster than text. So I advise you to use the latest design trends, eye-catching and trending colors. For example, you can visit the Pantone Institute website for some inspiration. Uh, also, it's a good idea to highlight uh, the most popular feature, features and unique selling propositions of your app. This allows you to provide prospective users with valuable insights about what sets your app apart. Also, if there is a comparator in your category with strong brand awareness, consider replicating their unique selling propositions and visual strategies to resonate with your target audience. You can also leverage social proof to establish trust and credibility. You can incorporate user reviews, ratings, or testimonials to showcase that your app is appreciated by others and valuable. But don't forget that this works only for search results and variations, because for today's tab, there are certain rules that you need to follow. Uh, you can check them on Apple's website. Uh, also, in search results, ad variations ensure that your messages and visuals align with the Apple search ads keywords uh, you are using, increasing the likelihood of capturing users' attention and interest. And localization is definitely a key to meeting customer expectations. Uh, speak your customer's language by tailoring your content to their specific regions and cultural preferences, maximizing engagement and revenue potential. Uh, also, what I'd like uh, to cover is both our approaches when fully managing Apple search ads and custom product pages for our clients. Uh, as we are Apple search ads partner, both on uh, campaign management and custom product page development. Uh, so my next slide focuses on our approach uh, when working with Apple search ads. Uh, the first step is always a detailed research, and this step this step can't be skipped as you need to understand your market, competitors, the audience, the keywords you can use, the keywords your competitors are using. Uh, you also should understand the main idea of your app, what you'd like to deliver to your users, and all these factors will help to create your strategy. After completing the first stage, start working with Apple Search Ads account, I mean set up and first campaigns, testing and optimizing them. And here you should also understand your KPIs and constantly analyze your campaign performance because it's really important in order to make database decisions on your campaigns and keep testing. Uh, also, having data under your sleeve uh, allows you to generate new hypotheses to scale and start testing them. And when coming to the custom product pages, Tonki, uh, we have a similar approach here. Everything starts with forming hypotheses, and to do so, a detailed research is required. Here, you should also analyze what your app functionality is used more often, where the user spends more time, uh, because the key functionality can be taken as the basis for forming the hypothesis. And don't forget about the reviews. Uh, we have a case uh, when our ASO team analyzed um, reviews uh, about what users are liked most about the app, and we highlighted it via custom product pages. So I started talking about the importance of team collaboration here. Uh, for example, in Split Metrics Agency, we have an experienced and seasoned ASO team, and these incredible people uh, share their approaches, tips, and practices with us. And of course, me and the rest of our UA team implement their recommendations when generating custom product pages hypotheses. Uh, after that, you can start developing their creatives. And here we collaborate with our design team. We also know who also know all the latest trends and incorporate them in our custom product pages. Uh, it's really important to take into account cultural differences, especially if you'd like uh, to scale in more regions. So you definitely need to understand what peculiarities each market has. Uh, the last and uh, most important is the results. So when analyzing the results, you can think about the new hypothesis to test and definitely make a huge impact when you have all the data from running multiple custom product pages. 
Uh, and wrapping up the conversation, I'd like to point that right now, due to the economic factors, fierce competition and several other factors, uh, clients do not have a lot of time doing guesswalking. They need constant results. So if you need any help in managing the Apple search ads or creating successful custom product pages, or you need uh, any advice on how to prepare the strategy, you can drop me a line or you can drop Split Metrics Agency a line, or you can just paste your mail into the chat and we'll get back to you. And before I'll pass the floor to Magdalena from Tanestro, who will share the amazing results they achieved with the help of search results ad variations using custom product pages. Let's review if you are using custom product pages or are still thinking about it. So the event team, please show us the results. Yes, yeah, so um, I see that 90% of you already tested custom product pages and got uh, great results. So it's uh, cool, uh, keep going and testing more. Uh, yes, 27% of you uh, are testing custom product pages right now. So you're going the right way, definitely. Uh, and 32% uh, of you planning to test custom product pages soon and 22% uh, would like to learn more. Uh, so for those of you who are still thinking, I believe that uh, Magdalena will prove now that it's high time to start using them. So thanks for sharing. I think uh, after Magdalena shares her impressive success stories, you would, would have no doubts whether to test custom product pages or not. And with this, Magdalena, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Anastasia. Um... So I come here uh, repre representing Tonestro and Tonestro as a company uh, is dedicated to providing high quality learning exp experience for brass, woodwind and string instruments. And compared to, for example, guitar or piano, teaching and learning instruments such as violin, trumpet or saxophone can be actually seen as a, a more complex task. Each instrument has its unique learning curve with like distinct challenges. And currently our key audience are beginners, a adult beginners per se. And some of them are, are our dream realizers. So these are people who always wanted to um, learn how to play, for example, violin, and now as adults are able to do so. Or uh, we also aim for people who, for example, played as children, and now they want to reignite their old passion or they want to start learning uh, another instrument. And with users with different motivations and with different instruments of choice, of course, we face different challenges. Uh, those users rather different, uh, face different challenges. Some users struggle with finding a structured learning content online or a suitable teacher. The others, for example, need sheet music library or metronome or tuner or just learning community. And our products do cater to those needs, and, but communicating all those USPs on the first screenshots is quite difficult. And we still have to um, convince users that they actually can learn via an app without a teacher uh, on their side. So with these circumstances, uh, custom product, product pages seems to be the no brainer uh, however, referring a bit to the poll results uh, that mentioned that actually half of you is not running them yet. Um, we have not planned to run our first custom product page uh, at all. We changed our mind, of course, just before Christmas last year. Um, but I will give you a little bit more background of that, how it actually came about. Um, so Split Metrics Agency has been uh, managing our Apple search ads campaigns for our uh, vinyl lessons app since September 22. And actually by December of 22, those um, campaigns were have been meeting our goals. And um, together we have discovered that we uh, received a lot of impressions from uh, keywords related to violent, key, uh, violent tuner. And at that particular moment, that was not a segment that we're focusing the most. And um, violin-related keywords have high search popularity, 
and they could attract more users for us. And it was the big season for us. So we have decided to start working on it with split metrics and launch it. Our hypothesis was too that um, the tool itself, which is available in the app, is not represented uh, on the screenshot. So the results for violent violent related keywords are actually poor. So this has impacted the overall results for our Apple search ads campaign. And um, um, in the lead up, the peak season, we decided to create them. And till this day, I'm really, really thankful to Speedmetrics team because they managed to pull off the designing of the custom product pages. And we have launched them just before uh, Christmas Eve. And um, we had a few goals behind creating those custom product pages. Uh, of course, no brainer, we wanted to enhance the results of violent tuner related keywords. We also wanted to increase the user interaction with the tool within the app. And also as it was our peak season, we wanted to capture as much traffic as possible. And the design concept for the custom product page uh, was to um, focus the violin tuner, of course, show a person doing the tuning. Uh, but what was important for us, we still wanted to um, present the learning path as we don't want users to have the impression that violin tuner is a standalone app. No, we wanted to keep them in the learning loop. And we have also included call to actions, encouraging users to return to learning. That's a direct nudge towards our uh, core group. And the launch of this custom product page, product page was a success for us. Um, it indeed improved our results. Uh, and I won't particularly with reading the numbers from the slides, but what I can add on top of it is that we have actually made changes in the our product's UI so that Violent Tuner is more easily accessible to users now. And on a operational level, we have um, extracted the, those keywords from, and we pay like separate attention towards them. They have a different KPIs from us and we still obser observe them. And also we now are testing adding tuner in our uh, app titles and subtitles so this actually impacted our aso strategy and um, after seeing those positive results for our violin lessons app um, we have um, decided to launch also uh, Apple search ad campaigns for our second product, uh, the Tonestro Learn to Play Music app. I might also refer to it as the Wind Lessons app, um, so please bear with me. However, this is a um, app with uh, that has one crucial difference to Violin Lessons app. It does not have only one learning path; it has multiple. Uh, you, as you can uh, learn from it, uh, uh, saxophone, trumpet, trombone, clarinet, flute, uh, and a few others. So on top of the challenges that we had with uh, the violin lesson, uh, which was which benefit to present uh, on our screenshots, uh, we had one additional uh, issue that we have to somehow present the particular instruments. However, we launched our uh, Apple Search as campaign with our default product page. And after actually receiving not so um, satisfying results, we have quite quickly decided to start producing with Split Metrics a bunch of five custom product pages for uh, specific instruments. And um, as we had this, our main hypothesis behind it was that it is quite probable that a saxophone player, for example, when searches for saxophone lessons, may be discouraged from uh, downloading and using the app if the person sees a clarinet or trumpet player on the first screenshot. So we wanted to tackle that. 
And the design strategy behind those um, uh, custom product pages was to, of course, feature a musician uh, of a specific instrument in the first screenshot, incorporate our crucial search, term, search terms and high converting phrases, and we also wanted to hint that the other learning paths are available in the app. And on the latter screenshots, we want to highlight that we have other benefits such as real-time feedback, progress tracking, or sheet music library uh, available in the app. Um, additionally, uh, we have started experimenting with different look of feel of the whole screenshot composition to gain insight for modifying our main product page assets. As a result, these assets look quite different from our uh, main page. Um, we also wanted to optimize the time and effort uh, of this uh, big project for us and allow us to create additional instrument specific product pages if we need them quite quickly. So as you can see, they're quite similar in structure and we can also uh, mix the screenshots from different sets. And if we want to, we can uh, easily add another instrument. And as you can see, behind the project of creating the bulk set of uh, custom product pages for a wind app, uh, we have uh, put a lot as we wanted to make the most out of this whole effort for us. And uh, those custom product pages were launched in April and um, the results are uh, encouraging because uh, we do see um, increase in the conversion rates. Uh, the conversion rates for each particular custom product page is better than the conversion rates for the default product page. And um, our uh, campaigns for uh, Violin Lessons app are now managed by split metrics and are meeting our goals. So we are now focusing on scaling the campaigns and not only on optimizing them towards our goals. And additionally, and drawing from the experience from December, uh, we have introduced also a custom product page for the wind tuner, as we call it, as we didn't want to wait uh, for Christmas to uh, launch it on the last time uh, in the last minute mode. So the custom product page for wind instruments uh, tuner is also up and running and it is bringing uh, results. And um, I hope these examples have been uh, somewhat valuable to you or maybe inspiring you. Or, and if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll try, try to answer. Thank you so much, Magdalena. Uh, for sure, it's inspiring, even for me. Uh, I didn't disappear. I was uh, listening attentively and gathering questions from our audience, uh, which you guys sent us both uh, on the chat and privately to speakers and organizers. So I want uh, to thank both Anastasia and Magdalena uh, for your very informative, valuable, insightful presentations. And uh, now it's time to answer the questions uh, our dear audience uh, has posted. So um, I don't know where should I start. Probably this one. Uh, what approaches to testing order segments using custom product pages would you recommend? Uh, Anastasia, probably you'd like to cover this one. What do you think? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. It is an interesting question uh, because there are different approaches here. Uh, but we in Split Metrics Agency uh, usually use a communicative strategy approach, and we uh, focus on five Ws. And um, these are who, what, when, and where, and why. So uh, when we're generating uh, the hypothesis, we uh, ask ourselves five questions. So who our user is, what we can offer them, uh, when and where we can interact with them. I mean, at placement or country or region and why he should choose us. And uh, to answer uh, these uh, questions, uh, as I mentioned earlier in my presentation, uh, we should conduct a detailed research. So we should analyze the app, the market, uh, the competitors, uh, semantic or specific market peculiarities, and uh, so on. Uh, 
uh, as for example, for a game app, uh, where the target you audience are uh, gamers, uh, usually, uh, so uh, we can divide them into four categories, uh, depending on their goals that they pursue in the game. And uh, they are usually killers, achievers, socializers, and explorers. Uh, so we analyze uh, what motivates them, what uh, drives them, and uh, try to put uh, triggers for each type of users on the screenshots of custom product pages. Oh, wow, thank you so much, Anastasia. Such a an detailed and extended uh, answer. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing. And I have another one. Uh, do CPPs have an impact on ISO efforts or vice versa? Did you observe any interrelation, interconnection? Magdalena, I think the floor is yours with this one. You've shared such great cases. Uh, thank you. Um, I also recall that a few weeks ago, Splitmetrics hosted a uh, webinar uh, touching a little bit uh, on this topic. I remember the title, the uh, ASO must-haves with the trends and AIs in it. Um, so probably that covered a lot, um, but I will try to add something from me. And it actually highly connects to uh, what I have shared already. So. Um, after our big discovery of violin tuner um, uh, keyword impact, um, we have decided to start testing it in our in our ASO strategy. So now actually the name of our uh, violin lessons uh, app contains the keyword tuner. So that was a direct impact. And um, also maybe this is not a uh, observed but like implemented interconnection but when we were creating the uh, custom product pages for uh Tonestro learn, learn to play music app we considered which benefit to showcase for each search term uh from our aso strategy and actually which words to highlight in the design uh so that was our like internal interconnection of those two fields and also operationally on a team level, uh, in the times where budget, budgets are not unlimited, uh, creating a set of custom product pages can serve as a opportunity to design new screenshots. And that was a case for us because we were able to uh, maybe test some ideas that we wanted later on uh, implement in our default um, uh, product page. So, with the custom product pages designs, we are, were able to accomplish few tasks at once. Thank you so much again for sharing uh, your experience with that. Thank you, Magdalena. And you guys are so active. Thank you so much. I see uh, the questions uh, continue and popping up uh, on the chat. But uh, if we um, don't make it today, if we are not able to answer all of them now, no virus, uh, like I mentioned, we'll be sending out the recording to you and also we'll be posting that on blog. And I think we'll answer everything and uh, send you the answers together with the questions if we don't have uh, enough time to cover just everything. And uh, meanwhile, uh, um, I'm reading the next one question uh, we had on the chat. What is the good sign of custom product pages? Mm, it's an interesting question, I think. Uh, Anastasia, could you please answer that? Uh, yes, sure. So um, first of all, we should track all the final metrics like uh, tap through rate, uh, conversion rate or cost per install uh, just to ensure that a custom product page uh, performs uh, better or worse than a default page for uh, this or that audience segment. Um, basically, a sign of a good uh, custom product page uh, can be higher tap through rate, of course, uh, increase in downloads volume, in uh, impressions volume also it may be increase in uh, share of voice and of course uh, decrease of costs like uh, cost per tab or cost per install um, but uh, for me as a user acquisition manager it, it is crucial to meet kpis like cost per goal or ras uh, so because we consider 
um, custom product pages as a tool to scale the business, to improve our current results, to expand the audience. Uh, so um, I mention it uh, because sometimes uh, we can get a uh, tabs through rate that is two times better than the default page shows but at the same time we see an increase in cost per goal or cost per install uh, so um, if you are meeting your kpis while uh, testing custom product pages that it means that you definitely go in the right way very interesting. Thank you so much, Anastasia. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, sorry about that. Uh, I see a question on the chat uh, that I haven't seen previously. It's about uh, the percentage of uh, views per screenshot. This is from Mariah. Mariah, um, I can share with you that we have a CPP intelligence uh, tool custom, to monitor custom product pages of your competitors. So there you will be able uh, to um, not track a percentage for each screenshot, but for each variation. But uh, I, I guess that's what you meant. Uh, you can check um, each custom product page uh, your competitors are running, check keywords, uh, the uh, impression share uh, of each variation of each custom product page, how often it is uh, actually sh uh, shown in search results, etc. I've dropped a link here. so. Uh, feel free to take a look and to reach out to us if you have um, uh, any more questions. Yeah, and meanwhile, another question, um, also a very interesting one, I think. Uh, how can we align our CPPs with our app's brand messaging? Magdalena, I think um, you can answer that because um, uh, you probably face that uh, in your job. What do you think? Um, so I must admit that I have been always torn when it comes to the questions around branding and, and flexibility around it. And throughout my career, I have worked with brands that had really rigid rules around branding and the rules were really like detached from the customer journey. And, but also on the other side, I do have a soft spot for visual and verbal uh, consistency. And I do like wall design assets. So um, I do uh, prefer to maintain overall uh, consistency that in the in coloring, in typography, in the tone of voice and in the overall design. But um, a custom product page is at the end of the day, a product page that is seen by a user in very specific circumstances, and it has to convert. Uh, so that's why I do uh, recommend to leave some flexibility uh, for the messaging to just test it and see uh, how it converts, because this is very important touch point and uh, branding can have some uh, flexibility here and, and rather should, in my personal opinion. And it also, of course, it depends on the brand. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, it's uh, also about not only conversion, but also brand awareness. So I totally agree that everything should be in line, including uh, product pages. So thank you, Magdalena. And uh, we have another question. Thank you guys again for being so active. We have a lot of questions and you can continue sharing it. And uh, as a reminder, I know I've already told it, but we will share the answer to, with you after the webinar if we don't make it today. So uh, can you provide insights on the optimal frequency for updating custom product pages? I think uh, I also saw another one very similar on the chat. Uh, it was about how, um, when you are getting the first results, the first, um, how you evaluate the performance. So they are pretty similar, but let's, uh, let's stick with this one. Uh, so I'm repeating it. Can you provide insights on the optimal frequency for updating custom product pages? Anastasia, what's your uh, what's your experience on that? Uh, yeah, it's an interesting question because there is no some gold standard for optimal frequency of updating custom product pages. Um, because it really depends uh, on the specific needs of your app and uh, the dynamics of your app. 
Uh, so, for example, when you release some updates or some new features of your app, uh, it is uh, important to reflect uh, these changes on your custom product pages. Uh, also, if you run some seasonal uh, events or some uh, promotions, it is also a good practice to update your custom product pages accordingly. Um, also, you need um, to stay updated with uh, the latest industry and design trends. Uh, so, I mean, to keep an eye on your uh, competitor strategy uh, and uh, monitoring changes on the market. And also, it may be beneficial to update custom product pages in order to stay relevant and competitive on the market. So, um, if you have uh, resources uh, to develop hypotheses to create custom product pages, you have test budgets, so it definitely makes, makes sense uh, to do it on an ongoing basis, uh, because as with uh, regular creatives for other channels, uh, it is always uh, a chance to find something more performant. Yeah, thank you, Anastasia. And I found uh, that the one question very similar on the chart. It's uh, what period for CPP test do you think optimal for making further decisions on this CPP? So I think uh, Anastasia has partially covered it because it um, it all depends. You should track your own indicators. Um, uh, so there is no silver bullet. But uh, Ekaterina, uh, who sent this question, I think will get back to this later as well. Well, guys, uh, thank you so much again. Um, I see other questions. And um, uh, by the way, what I can recommend, uh, if you have uh, some challenges running custom product pages, I see the questions about uh, traffic uh, to specific um, custom product pages. You can, um, by the way, check out our custom product page playbook. Probably you'll find uh, something interesting. Uh, our team worked on that, and there are a lot of uh, a lot of effective insights. So I'll ask our team to drop uh, the link on the chat. So let's wrap up. Um, I'd like to thank everyone, everyone for your participation today, and hope uh, you bring home really actionable uh, tips, really eye-opening probably insights and steps to create custom product pages. And at least you'll get inspired by the cases and uh, best practices uh, our uh, awesome speakers shared today. So, and uh, huge thanks, huge thanks to Magdalena for joining us today. Uh, and huge thanks to Anastasia for sharing your experience. Uh, very, very insightful. Uh, thank you for joining me today. And um, we are now uh, launching the final poll uh, to get uh, the audience, uh, your, your guys' feedback about your experience with this session. So thank you again for your time today and uh, for being active, for sending us uh, the questions. We'll answer all of them. And uh, have a great day and please vote. Uh, please uh, leave your feedback. And um, thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. I, I, we see everything on the chat. Uh, oh, the best example of CPP I've seen recently is from Opera for the Firefox keyword. Thanks for sharing your insights. Thank you, Olivia, thank you. So wrapping up, thank you, Anastasia. Thank you, Magdalena. Say bye to the audience. And uh, I, th I think see you soon in further sessions. Yes, thank you, bye. Thank you all for coming.